Hello, good evening, welcome to another Wednesday Midweek Mindfulness. Uh, I'm Jeff Newton, I will be here every Wednesday at 8 o'clock just to walk you through some basic mindfulness techniques and give you something to think about. You can join me live or um, watch the recording later. <clears throat> okay. So without much further ado, let's get into some mindfulness practice. So find yourself a nice seated comfortable position, either on the floor or in a chair, and you want to have your back relatively straight. This is a very important element that all mindfulness people across all different traditions will um, put forward. Keeping your back upright pays some respect for the activity of mindfulness meditation. It also stops you falling asleep, keeps you sort of energised rather than slouching and slumping. So back up straight, head back over the top of your shoulders, shoulders down and back, open your chest up, allow some breath in there again, sort of present some honour to this practice. Let your hands just fall naturally in your lap. Palms usually face upwards. That just helps to open the shoulders up and it's more relaxing. You can place one palm in the palm of the other, one hand in the palm of the other if you like, and just let your thumbs gently touch together. It's a nice sort of relaxing way to be. You can put your palms just resting upwards on top of each knee if you wish. It doesn't really matter where you put your hands as long as it's fairly comfortable and you can stay there for as long as you intend to sit. Now your legs. If you're sitting in a chair put your feet flat on the floor right in front of you so you need to be able to get a chair that's a little bit adjustable maybe or one that's already built exactly for your height. You don't want to have your feet sort of splayed out in front of you, which means the chair is too short, or you, you, and you do want to be able to touch the floor, so you don't want a chair that's too tall for you. They're about shoulder width apart. So if the chair is too tall for you, you could always put a little stool under your feet or a couple of cushions. That's sort of nice and comfy. Once you're in that position, in that seated position, you just turn your attention to your breath. You can close your eyes or you can keep them open, whatever's more comfortable for you. But then just turn your attention with a little bit of willpower to your breath. Maybe at the beginning you can take some big, deep, deliberate breaths. Just to make it really obvious what you're paying attention to. And you can watch your breath either here at your nose, maybe just under your nose on your top lip. You can watch your breath here in your belly, rise and fall. Or you can watch the flow of your, from the air in and out. Or you can not place your attention anywhere in particular at all and just be in your body while you are breathing. In your body while you are breathing. After you've taken a few initial deep breaths to really give your mind something to hang on to, can let your breath just calm down to its natural rhythm. And you want to place as much of your attention as you possibly can on your mind. Sorry, on your breath. Try to really examine it. Notice the shorter breaths.
Notice the longer breaths. Notice where you can feel the breath. Can you feel it in your nostrils? Notice if there are any sounds to your breathing. You're not judging any of these as right or wrong, good or bad, the way it should be done or not. You're just noticing. And that, in essence, is the entirety of mindfulness meditation. You sit and watch your breath. That can be a little bit difficult. Because our mind tends to want to jump around and notice this and notice that. Again, don't judge that. That is what the mind is meant to do. It's looking out for things that might hurt us. It's looking out for things that might be useful for us. It's looking out for who's in my tribe and are friendly, or who is not in my tribe and may possibly be unfriendly. All these things our mind is doing for us. which in the modern world, we don't really need all that much. There is already far too much to distract us. So the idea of spending a little bit of deliberate attention on our breath is to train our mind just to let go of some of those things. Let go of the shiny, let go of the interesting, let go of the possibly harmful, let go of the to-do list, and just be for a moment with your breath. Should your mind wander to an item on your to-do list or a phone call you just had, when you notice your mind has wandered, without judgment or criticism, just gently bring it back to your breath. And that is the exercise, that is the mental gymnastics which will strengthen your mind to stay focused on what you want it to be focused on. So we're just watching our breath. You can place your attention right on your nose if you wish, or on your belly. Or you can place your attention on the air coming in and out of your lungs. Visualize that air coming in 
visualize that air going out. It is almost irrelevant what you place your attention on. The idea really is to train your mind to stay focused and present on one item. Single pointed meditation, some people call this. Each time your mind wanders, just bring it back to your single point of concentration. If your mind is very jumpy, you might need something slightly stronger to hold its attention in these beginning stages of our practice. So you might like to count your breaths. Breathe in, breathe out, one. Breathe in, breathe out, two. Breathe in, breathe out, three, and so on up to ten. Should you be distracted anywhere in that, just start over again from one when you manage to bring your mind back to your breath. Once you reach 10, just count back down 9, 8, 7, through to 1. And there is no goal. Remember one of our attitudes to mindfulness is non-striving. So it doesn't matter what number you get to. The idea of counting is to give you just a bit of a benchmark. For three or four weeks, you may only ever get to three. And then one day you get to six. It just lets you know that you are progressing, which is bound to happen. It has to happen if you keep practicing. As I said, we can use almost anything as our single point of concentration. So now I'm going to invite you to move your attention 
from your breath to your thoughts themselves. So this is a little bit of a higher order mindfulness meditation. Because what we want to do is just sit in silence without any thoughts. And the way we do that is we we sort of pretend that we're watching, keeping your mind out for the next thought. So try not to think, what is my next thought going to be? When is my next thought going to come? I wonder if it'll be a good thought. Try not to think any of those things, but rather just sit and sort of wait. And a thought will just pop into your head. And when it does, just look at that thought for a moment. Don't judge it. Don't label it as good or bad or silly or anything. Just notice, oh, I had a thought about what I'm going to do tomorrow. And then go back to waiting for the next thought. in a way your single pointed concentration is anticipation it's nothing really but you're just waiting in anticipation for the next thought and it may come quickly it may come very slowly let's just sit for a few moments in anticipation of the next thought. Now if a thought does come along and it's a little bit sticky, as in you get stuck to it and carried away with that thought, and you get drawn down into the thought rabbit hole, when you notice that you have stuck to that thought a bit too long and you haven't let it go and you haven't come back to waiting for the next then now's the time to bring your mind back to that point of concentration which is just waiting for the next thought. Exactly what we did with the breath. So here we're kind of wanting to keep ourselves separate from our thoughts because we are not our thoughts especially when we're not deliberately creating them as we are now. What we're doing now is waiting for our mind to show us the next thought. It might be a very interesting thought. It might be boring. But your job, your focus here is just raw anticipation just waiting, waiting.
you wander off and start thinking about something when you do catch yourself gently without criticism bring your mind back to just waiting for the next thought and by doing this we start to realize that we are not our thoughts and we do this technique long enough we have the realization that some of these thoughts are just coming from nowhere and some of these thoughts I don't want to have maybe they're crazy weird thoughts that have nothing to do with your life or maybe they're horrible thoughts that you just don't like. And with that realization that we are not our thoughts, comes a little bit of liberation. Because next time we're going about our business and we have a thought we don't like, we don't have to get stuck to it. We can just go, oh, I don't like that thought. I'm so glad I can just let it keep floating by. Because it's not me. It's just my mind throwing up these random thoughts. It thinks it's helpful in some way, but it's just... If we do this technique long enough too, we start to realize that our mind kind of operates by itself. There's some sort of mental phenomenon happening in our brain. But we're not totally in control. And we start to realize that some of these thoughts a complete rubbish. Random bits of data just getting chucked into our consciousness. Some of them are weird, some of them are helpful, and some of them are just garbage. those realizations that insight really comes in handy when we start getting thoughts presented to us like I'm not good enough this is embarrassing I'm not even going to bother trying because I always fail and when those thoughts come up we can also recognize that they are not me. And they're most likely incorrect. We can let them float on by and not get stuck to them like a fly to fly trap. So this is a really good technique my friends, practice this technique of waiting for the next thought 
as much as you can while you're waiting in line for something. Not that that happens lately with all this COVID stuff. While you're eating your breakfast even, if you don't want to do mindfulness of eating, just chew mindlessly while you wait for your next thought. And eventually, just like when we're counting our breaths, we will, we will eventually move from getting to three quite easily, up to six, up to ten, and then all the way back down to one. Eventually that will happen. It's bound to. It just has to. This technique will eventually show you that you are not your thoughts. That there is a gap between you and your thoughts. Sure, you can deliberately think about a task at hand, yes. But there are also many, many thoughts that, that just get randomly put into your head that are not you, that are not correct. You don't have to act on them. And you can just let them go. So with that... I thank you for joining me. I wish you all the very best. And I'll see you next Wednesday night. Good night.